Hello everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I always say that one of the best ways to know if somebody who reviews products actually likes the company is where do they spend their own money? Uh, for me, you know, I review a lot of Arduino stuff, a lot of electronics, a lot of meters and stuff like that. Um, when I spend my own money, I spend it on things like Kaiweets. I spend it on things like um, Key Studio and Canakit and things like that. And uh, <laughs> Occasionally, I have to spend my own money on Arduino cases and Raspberry Pi cases. And when I do, um, yeah, I choose KKSB. So let's take a look. So I never really wanted to be in the hardware business, um, but I've sort of become known as the person who will build the weird thing that you need and get it to you the next day. And so um, I build things like... Uh, SEMA booths and CES booths and I build um, rapid prototypes and I build devices for the government and I build devices for Fortune 500 companies and all that kind of stuff and one of the challenges has always been you know how do I do an enclosure for these things um, you know I, most of the time I'm building things in relatively small quantities I need to get them out quickly and so you know how am I going to do that and so I used to spend so much time going over which case that I want to put things in. And uh, a couple years ago, a company called KKSB reached out to me asking me if I would do a video, like a sponsored video. And at the time I was so busy that it really wasn't worth doing a sponsored video. But as I poked around their site and then found them on Amazon, I wound up, um, you know, buying a whole bunch of their products just right off the bat. And it turns out that this company has cases for pretty much everything and so um the various kksb cases have become my standard this is the worst example possible but this little like <laughs> you know i needed an industrial indicator light that was connected to the internet and all that kind of stuff um and I just needed it to be out there for a prototype and it needed to be something that could be there in a factory environment. And one of the things I love about these cases is that they're anodized or um, powder coated really well to where I can use the laser to engrave a custom logo on the side or instructions, you know, put COM port information, all that kind of stuff on them. And so KKSB has become my standard go-to case. So I had placed an order with KKSB for 50. I, I, I mean, I've literally ordered hundreds of cases from these people, um, but I placed an order of 50 of these for a client. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I just got my first Raspberry Pi 5. I said I wasn't gonna get one, but I decided to get one. And uh, I thought, let me check out their offerings in the Raspberry Pi 5 case universe. So that is the story. That's why I have all these cases and we're going to compare these four and just take a look at them and see what I think. So the first case we're going to take a look at is the KKSB Raspberry Pi 5 aluminum case. And I think it's really cool. They've got the instructions right here. You got a little QR code. You can scan how to put these things together. And you might think, well, it's obvious how to put things together, but not necessarily. There are um, things that have to go in in certain orders and certain screws in certain places. And so you wanna make sure you do it right. Picking this thing up, it is amazing how light this thing is. And I know it's aluminum and everything like that. It doesn't feel cheap, but it feels amazingly light. Um, and I think that is very, very cool. You know, they drilled this out. They went for as light as possible. Um, one of the things just looking right off the bat is that um, I love the fact that they have these little cutouts here so that you can mount the thing on the wall, you know, almost like an outlet strip, like one of these, uh, I can't reach it there. Um, one of those things like on the back of the outlet strip where you can uh, put two screws on and slide it down, you can mount it horizontally, vertically, upside down if you want. Um, whatever orientation that you want to do it, uh, you can do, which I think is very cool. Um, this looks like some kind of fan mount here, which I don't know that that would normally be on the back. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of going at this uh, blind. So I think that's pretty cool. It does not come with a fan, but I think this case is very clearly geared to people who are using the GPIO. It's been a little while since I've actually used the GPIO 
on a Raspberry Pi. So in my case, I tend to use Raspberry Pis in one of two ways, either as like little arcade type things where they have like single purpose software on them. Uh, you load up a Raspberry Pi arcade image and load it on there and just let it rip and don't really think very much about it. Or I use them as mini portable servers. Uh, occasionally the third usage I'll use for them is uh, I'll use them for like little kiosks and displays where I want just a single web page to show up or something like that. Um, but I haven't been using the GPIO a bunch, and I sort of wonder if I should. Um, it's been a little while. So one of the things I think is really cool about this is that it has this GPIO extender here, and that's very clearly so that you can put the board in like this and then put the case in like this, and your GPIO pins are going to reach the top so that you can actually access them from up there. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, one thing I've seen also that looks nice is the fact that you can actually get to the SD card from uh, the unit when it's when it's in the case. There's a lot of those ones like the Argon ones are a real pain in the butt to get to the card once you have it in there. Uh, looks like, oh, very cool. That's a cool thought. Look at this. You got this little uh, push button here to hit this button on the Raspberry Pi, which is sweet. Um, yeah, so it's nice. It's stood off far enough. If you look at that, it's stood off far enough so that you can put those screws through there and not worry about shorting out anything on the back of the board. Um, you can get all your ports. I'll just go ahead and push it in. Um, it is very cool. It's very well thought out. I'll give them that. Um, so it does not include a fan in the case. Uh, so, you know, pros and cons, you can get your own fan, decide which fan you want. Um, but it is a very cool... Uh, lightweight case that seems like it'd be pretty ideal for people who mess around with the GPIO up top. The next one we have here is the KKSB Raspberry Pi 5 case passive heatsink. And uh, I'll be honest, one of the many things that have led me to using Raspberry Pis less and less is the need to actively cool them. Basically everything from the original Raspberry Pi to the Pi Zeros all the way up to the Pi 3B, you would just stick them in a case, stick them in a corner and not really think about it. They wouldn't make any noise, you didn't need to cool them, you didn't need to check on the fan or anything like that. But as you started getting into the Pi 4 and 5, it required a little bit more thought. You needed to pick a fan, the fans are small, the fans needed to run fast and became loud because of how much horsepower you were packing in a tiny area. So although it's very cool that this board has orders of magnitude more power than the original Raspberry Pis, a lot of times that was power that I didn't actually need and then I had to dissipate all that heat in the terms of uh, needing fans. And so that was a bit obnoxious, but this aims to solve that with a passive cooler. And as you can see, that is a very nice chunky cooler in there. And uh, I don't know that you'd be able to really overclock the thing or anything crazy like that, but you can uh, run this thing without a fan, which I think is sweet. And the other thing that I'm really impressed at as I look at this is that they included room to do things. Like you can run GPIO cables out here if you need to. Uh, there's places to run cables here. You get that same little button. You can see your status LED over here. Um, you know, you've got access to your ports, obviously, but even on this side, you have uh, places to run the camera slash display cable out, which I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, we've got some holders for mounting cameras and things like that. So I think that what's cool about this is that it's really clear that they obviously thought about it. This isn't a commercial. I'm just literally looking at this for the first time uh, with you all. And having held a ton of these cases in my hand, I can really appreciate that these things are accessible. As you look in there, you can see there's room to run wires out the side. And, um, you know, occasionally you need to do that. This was the first example case that I showed you. And I know this looks absolutely ridiculous because this was an early prototype and it's just one of the only cases I haven't sent off to a client. Um, but occasionally on something like this, I needed a light to go off when the AI camera did something and did specific things. And I really appreciated the fact that they gave me this nice grommet hole to run these wires out so I could attach this thing to the side. And you have similar things here. You can get wires out of this thing in various places, which will allow you to, um, you know, install this somewhere and have some external stuff. And you can make it look halfway decent. <laughs> and I mean halfway decent. So I decided to pull the whole case apart so you can see how it was made. And uh, it's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, so this looks like an entire block of, I'm guessing, aluminium. 
Um, but you can see here that these things are stepped at various levels to rest on top of the chips and be just one giant heat sink. And we've got some thermal pads included for that. And then you have this uh, very lightweight aluminum exterior piece. And then this piece feels like some kind of polycarbonate um, here. <laughs> There's, I don't know, it looks like, I don't know if it's like, I have literally no idea, but it's got that very same screw mounting thing here, which is really cool. As you can see here, you've got this really nice touch. Considering this is polycarbonate, you know, they could have just laser cut it flat, but instead uh, they bevel these holes out here so that when you put the thing down, even if a rubber foot falls out, you're not gonna have screws scratching up the desk and stuff like that. Just little things like that that I'm just really impressed with. Uh, again, not sponsored, but very, very cool. Um, so this thing, my overall take on this is that if you are doing a standard like Pi Arcade or standard small server and um, you're not overclocking the unit or anything like that, you could probably get away with a little bit of overclocking. But you know, if you're not planning on just really driving the unit really hard and uh, having things being quiet is important to you, then I think this case seems like a pretty good fit. But what if you're a power user and you want to have things like, you know, Pi hats on there and NVMe drives and all that kind of stuff? Well, you're still going to want to have those things in your case. And that's where this one comes in. This is the KKSB Raspberry Pi 5 case for hats and coolers. And uh, one of the things I love about this, see, this is what attracted me to KKSB originally, is things like this design here. These are sort of like modular knockouts. Now, of course, they're in here as vents and things like that. But as you see at the top, they're barely connected. So should you need to have a hole anywhere in this part of the case, you can actually just break those out. And then we've got um, access to the various GPIOs, places to run camera cables out the side. Um, same thing on this side, if your Pi shield fits that way, you can run things out there. And uh, one of the things I actually like about this case is that it has less writing on there. So you can sort of, um, it's something that I would engrave myself and put my own designations on there for what I want people to do. So I might say, you know, put the black USB cable here, things like that. Um, and I think this is really cool, this like nice little rounded design uh, on there. So let's open this thing up and take a look. So if you're ready to get more serious, then we've got this here. We're gonna take this whole thing apart. Um, we've got this nice, chunky piece of physics like steel up here um and then we've got the side panels that we mentioned before as well as some accessories in here that's a pretty heavy bag of accessories oh lots of stuff oh nice they have the gpio riser also so i think that was a good idea just even for documentation to be able to refer to these as the silver you know and the brass risers and things like that um so the idea with this one, um, although there's not holes to just drive the GPIO out the top, you do have this extension. This one can use things like the uh, power over ethernet hat. It can use the cooling hats. It can use the uh, NVMe hats and things like that. And so the case design itself is pretty simple, um, but it's the, the fact that you can put basically anything inside of them. Now, up until this point, um, my go-to on the Pi 4 was these argon cases and although i think these cases look really cool they have a nice little integrated fan and stuff like that and i'm not telling you not to buy them uh one thing that's proven to be an absolute pain in the rear end of me is their integrated soft power um button basically i've had to write some kind of script in nearly every single thing I do, uh, including pre-made images, to deal with this soft power button. Uh, turning it on, turning it off, the thing won't shut down, some of that because of this button. And so, um, although this case is nice and it's clean and I like the full-size HDMI ports, uh, one of the things that attracted me to this case is that it gets out of your way. Uh, you put whatever you want in there and you run it however you want and you don't have your case sort of interfering with your project. So um, in my mind where this one over here is really good for a low power server, uh, this one is a little bit better for a higher power server, something where you want that one terabyte NVMe drive on it or something like that. And last but not least we have the one that i'm most excited to take a look at the kksb raspberry pi 5 7 inch touchscreen case and so this thing is a honk of metal here and it is very sweet let's uh i'm going to give you my first impressions as i see them uh so we have a camera holder over here i love that i don't know if i have one handy um yeah it's away but those raspberry pi 5 cameras are really a pain in the butt to mount anywhere and so i love the fact that they've added that there so it looks like they were pretty smart with the design of this thing uh, as you can see here the raspberry pi has the ethernet on the side 
um, and you've got Ethernet here. So the idea is that you mount this upside down, and what that allows you to do is get to everything important. So you can leave the GPIO in the middle because you're not going to need that for this kind of project. But your all your camera connectors and your USB and your you know power and all that kind of stuff flip over to this side so that the board can kind of sit in here and you can get access to the various things. So we're going to look at it and just see. So we've got USB 2, 3, Ethernet, um, have our HDMI and uh, USB-C. Look at this. They made a thing like to where you could take this little panel off to get to the um, micro SD card. And the reason for that is that the screen is just plain taller. Like as you can see how this fits in here, there's really nothing you can do about it. They didn't make the screen. Um, so this allows them to give you access to the SD card without having to make the case smaller. And on the back, you can mount this uh, either landscape or portrait, which is pretty cool. So if you're doing some kind of entry tablet type thing, uh, makes it really nice and easy to mount. And yeah, so this thing is cool. Uh, I think I should put this thing together. What do you think? And if I'm being honest, that's where this thing went horribly wrong. Uh, the case is perfectly fine. It went together nicely. It looks good. It's heavy. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. There's nothing I don't like about this case, but the official Raspberry Pi 5 screen just didn't work. I don't know if it's my Pi. I don't know if it's the screen. I wasted a stupid amount of time messing around with it. And to be honest, I just don't care anymore. Um, so the case is great if you get a working screen, but um, for my purposes, I was just pretty much over it. Um, now, what I'm not over is this case. I really like this one. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the Raspberry Pi 5. In fact, uh, I think there's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't buy the board itself. But as far as the case goes, this thing is fantastic. One of the things I don't like about the Pi 5 is the need for active cooling that solves this. This allows the Pi to go back to be that little thing in the corner that just does what I want it to do. And so it is fantastic. I think all the cases are great but this is my favorite. Um, now, one of the things about KKSB is that they have cases for everything. When you go to their website, or even if you look around Amazon, I'll have some links. Uh, they have cases for all the little uh, single board computers and Arduinos and things like that. And so it's very, very cool. You can not only get cases for these things, but high quality cases. So I have had a long couple of days, so I'm gonna call it a day. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.